Hi, it's Tony Wilson with RSW Solutions. Today we're looking at an air compressor for the electronic air suspension in the P38A Range Rover. Uh, it's a very common failure item in the electronic air suspension in the old P38A Range Rover. And, but it can be fairly easily repaired. So today we're going to cover some of the two major problems. The first being the air compressor seal, which is in the uh, piston uh, housing here. Air compressor seal is a wearable item, and it's very easily replaced uh, without too much trouble. And uh, then after that, we'll probably look at the uh, rear of the air compressor. Uh, there's some bushings back here which fail, and there's an over temp sensor in the back that fails as well. So it's really easy to work with it. Uh, we're going to start first. We're going to pull off uh, the uh, filter housing. This is uh, like a this is a filter for the incoming air supply. Pretty easy to work with. Just comes right off. Then we're going to remove this top bracket that covers the piston. Uh, pretty simple, I believe. You see, uh, they're Torx bolts. I've got a, a T20 Torx uh, screw here, uh, Torx uh, ratchet here, but it might actually be a T25. So we're going to go ahead and remove this first, and then we'll get inside and start working with the actual seal. So these are pretty impressive little air compressors when you consider the work they do. Uh, they're really small for the size and their output, but they don't last forever. So generally the air compressor piston seal is going to wear out uh, somewhere, you know, somewhere around, I don't know, 100,000 miles, 120,000 miles, somewhere around in there. And one of the symptoms you'll get is the air compressor will just run for too long, really. It'll run for anywhere upwards of 20 minutes. Uh, when really an air compressor should run if the air system is depleted or depressurized you know we're talking like a 15 to 20 minute compressor runtime is what you would expect when they start running longer than 20 minutes they're getting worn out either you have leaks in the system or this uh this seal needs to be swapped out so now that we have there's the piston and down below Oh, this is the uh, cylinder, I'm sorry, this is the cylinder, and down below you can see the piston. It's this seal right here that we're going to be replacing today. And this compressor, the seal is actually doing okay. Uh, it looks pretty good, but for demonstration purposes, I have an extra seal, so we're going to replace it. So the kit that I purchased has the main Teflon uh, seal. Uh, the smaller O-ring is um, for one of the valves in the top and the head of the pump and this larger o-ring is uh, I believe seals the uh, top of this housing here we'll, we'll, we'll get into it more so we're going to take apart the head of the pump um, this comes apart this was our top cover I'm going to lay the side over here make sure these gaskets are not damaged also here as well Really got to be careful, these silicon gaskets, I have no idea where to get them replaced, and I'm sure they're not cheap. So, this is the head of the pump, where you have the cylinder and the valves. We're going to start by removing this one-way reed valve, and looking underneath there, looks like a real simple reed valve, there's two of them, there's a, uh, looks like the top is a rigid cover and the bottom is a more uh, flat spring steel thinner flat thinner spring steel we're going to clean up this surface make sure it's clean that o-ring right there definitely needs to be replaced so we are going to pop that o-ring out and replace it with the one that came with the kit okay real simple whenever we work with this you know pretty much whatever surfaces we're going to be contacting you make sure you don't scratch it you don't damage it and when we when we're done with the surface clean it so that whenever something needs to seal, we clean it so it can seal again. So we're just going to pop this o-ring out, nice and easy, and it is damaged. Uh, I can tell there's a lot of soot around that opening from just it's rubber soot. So, and that came from this o-ring. It's time to replace it. 
So we're going to clean this up and put the new O-ring in and reassemble the reed valve, making sure the reed valve is clean as, clean as well. All right, so we've also removed the reed valve on the bottom, uh, or I should say on the inside of the underneath of the uh, piston head there. And uh, this this aluminum board cylinder should just kind of should just kind of yeah twist out. There we go. Um, and again, make sure this is all clean in here. This surface is clean. This O-ring in here uh, is that larger black O-ring that's on the seal kit. Uh, so we'll just try our best to get this out without damaging any of the metal. We don't really care about the uh, gasket too much because, well, we've got another one to put in there. Uh, it is pretty in there. And I think this pump has actually been rebuilt before. Uh, there was a considerable amount of silicone sealing material I'm still getting out in there. Don't do that. Just replace the O-rings. Don't fill that with silicone or anything. Uh, so we're going to clean this up, make sure the surfaces are clean, Otherwise, and clean up those reed valves, put the O-rings back in, and we'll be done with the head of the pump. And we'll move on to the actual piston. Okay, so the head of the pump is pretty much done. Uh, we've um, placed the seals, uh, put the, the uh, reed valves back in, clean everything up really well. Uh, I usually use some Teflon lube. Teflon uh, lubrication to get everything back together. Notice the cylinder has a lip on one side. That's what's going to mate back up with this surface here, the lip. The flat side goes down back into the pump. This is done. We're going to set, set this aside. We're going to move on to the actual pump assembly. Let's get these uh, three bolts off here. And that'll give us access to the bottom of the piston, and then we can get the piston out. Okay, now with the cover off, you can see the piston and bearing assembly we're going to be getting to in a minute. First, we need to remove this hex bolt, our Allen bolt access cover. Should just, God, things on there tight. Okay, well, maybe we need to hit this with some penetrating fluid and then remove this bolt. So we finally got this uh, access bolt off. It just gives us access to the inside of the, of the uh, piston housing and it gives us access to the bolt which holds the piston on the armature of the motor. You can see that opening slide into view as I'm moving the piston up and down. So that will give you access right there to the uh, Allen bolt that secures, secures this to the armature of the motor. So we're going to loosen this and pull off the assembly. So we have this, this set screw that uh, fixes the counterbalance and piston to the rotor, the armature of the uh, motor, the rotor of the motor. And we're gonna also remove this red gasket to make sure we don't damage it. Now we need to pry the cylinder off using a long flat head wrench just kind of down in here and just kind of work this piston and counterweight off, which it looks like it's coming off just fine, until we can slide the piston out the bottom of, well, actually slide the piston out the top, excuse me, should be, top or bottom, not sure which one they're going to be. And it's the bottom. There we go. Now we have our assembly ready to work on. We're going to start working on removing this seal and replacing it next. So this is the part of the process which gets a little bit uh, daunting. Um, it's not terribly difficult though. So a little bit of explanation. Uh, this metal disc that's on top of the piston, if I remember correctly, is friction pressed 
Uh, so there's two pieces here. There's this top disc and then the main assembly. What we need to do is we need to get, there's a, a ridge in here, we need to start prying up. First though, uh, I think since this is the old seal, we're just going to start by cutting around the edge all the way around just to just to get it out of the way and cut off without cutting yourself obviously there we go. Um, and this should allow us to remove the seal maybe now you can see better what we're working with here so yeah we want to pry this co this brass collet off and so that will allow us to fit the new piston in place. The new piston has a uh, yeah, see the new piston it's kind of a, a dish a cup shape and it'll go in there and this copper, or excuse me, brass will uh, secure it in place. So we're going to try to see if we can remove this without damaging I don't really want to damage anything I want to get in there underneath and slowly pry it up as best as possible. Uh, if anything is damaged, we've got to go back and you know clean it up. Just going to get in there and kind of wiggle it up a little bit and move to the next spot. Get in there, kind of wiggle it up a little bit. Keep moving, keep, keep moving our way, way around the whole thing until it comes off. Now that you've gone through the process of removing the old gasket, it's a very difficult process, but it can be done. Then you want to reassemble the gasket and piston assembly with the brass ring, which goes around there. And you're going to want to hammer this home carefully with like a soft mallet uh, without damaging this outer lip of the gasket. The gasket's actually fairly fragile. You've got to be careful. It's brittle. Um, and then you're going to want to get this, drive this all the way home and beyond flush with this top of the piston it actually sinks back down in further. So be very careful. Uh, use like a soft mallet. You don't want to damage it. You get it all the way seated. So the um, seal is back on the piston and so is the the seating ring, the brass seating ring. Um, again just use your, you know, take time uh, you don't want to damage any of the surfaces if you can help it. If you do, make sure and clean it up. So we're going to put this back together. Um, when we put this back together, make extra special care not to damage the ring ceiling surface. So um, put this back together the way it came out. Slowly back up in there without damaging a thing. Gentle, gentle, gentle. I have to move this flywheel around. Uh, and then reposition it on the uh, rotor, the armature of the motor. The set screw has been uh, re-secured on the motor and the cover screw, access screw has been replaced. We're going to slide this uh, cylinder over the piston. It's very important to do this properly. The, uh, the seal needs to remain intact and it's, you can kind of slide it over sideways and then on top and down. It should go through very easily and you should not get any resistance really in the process. If you do, you're doing it wrong. It should go over really quite quite smoothly. Uh, you don't want to damage the uh, piston seal at all in this process. You don't want to tear it. Uh, and again, you should be able to do this quite easily with little effort. So we're going to try it again this time. We put a little bit of Teflon lube on the cylinder. And again, the piston ring, it's very important not to damage it. You want to kind of slide it over from the side gently so that when you do, it compresses this ring a little bit. Uh, just very gently. You really don't want to catch it on anything and tear it. You just want to free up on just enough tolerance to get that cylinder over the top of it and slide it on and then down and just into place. Be very careful not to tear this ring. Okay, that process wasn't so bad. It was easier to do uh, in my lap instead of in front of the camera. Uh, but basically if you can slide that cylinder on sideways 
the bottom of the cylinder will compress the rings. You just kind of then, then slide it down over the piston. We're ready to reassemble the head here. Making sure our gaskets are in place. We're ready for the cover. Cover plate. Uh, and we'll just reassemble. And next we'll attack the brush box. So the procedure to rebuild this air compressor is not terribly difficult. There's only a few things to really take extra special care uh, when performing. Uh, and that's first and foremost, uh, I didn't stress it enough in the video and I probably didn't show it very well, but you absolutely must take care when reassembling the cylinder over the piston. Uh, that is an extremely delicate part of the operation. Uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, show it very well on the camera because it was difficult to perform. But if, if, this, is our, um, if this is our piston, and here's our cylinder. Really, the way it's done is you, you come at it, make sure the piston's at the top uppermost stroke of, uh, inside the bore of the pump housing. And if this is your cylinder, you, you, you take it sideways over the top as much as you can, and then, and then over and down. Um, so yeah, you approach the cylinder sideways onto the piston head, where it compresses the seal uh, of, the, of the piston, of the new, your new piston ring, and then, and then over the top. Uh, don't push it in like this, it will tear. You have to come in at an angle, uh, come in at an angle, and then over the top. Um, the other thing, of course, to make sure that um, it's done properly uh, is that uh, everything's clean and uh, that you really don't damage the uh, piston when you pry off that brass ceiling ring, that brass press fit ring. It's a very difficult step you just need to take your time, work your way around, use a nice flathead, and just don't damage, you know, the uh, the piston. If you do, you make sure that you clean up your surface with some sanding paper or emery paper, so that there aren't any rough burrs or sharp edges to cut your new seal. And that's it. You know, by doing this, you can really extend the lifespan of these pumps for another eighty, hundred thousand miles. That's it. Thanks.